Welcome back to We Move Through Stormy Weather, a podcast by Storm Sound and Osiris Media. My name is Ryan Storm, and I am here today very excited uh, to be joined uh, by members of Unfreeze McGee, Joel Cummins, and Ryan Stasek. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Good to be here in Cleveland. I'm currently underwhelmed, hoping to become whelmed, and then after the show, overwhelmed. It's good. It's a good way to go. Is that, is that like a, a normal... Um, I'm losing the word here. Is that these uh, states that you go through on a regular basis on show days? No, I just don't think that we express our wellness. We're always either underwhelmed or overwhelmed, and I just wanted to prove out there yeah. that a lot of times Joel and I are just whelmed. Just whelmed, yeah. It's important to, uh, you know, to put your stake in that middle ground. 100%. Don't, don't be afraid. 100%, yeah. It, mi- the middle is, is the unsung hero of moods, I guess. Um, well... You know, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Joel and I have now done, I think this is now our our fourth interview. Uh, You know, we did one a few years ago about fish, and then this is the third, like, on-tour interview that we've done. Uh, It's exciting, and we're very excited to have Ryan joining us uh, this time. Welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Ryan and I, we're we're quickly running out of things to talk about, so we had to bring in uh, (laughs) Mr. Stasek here. We've got some fresh blood. Liven it up. Exactly. We'll we'll just keep accumulating band members, I guess, uh, as we do these. Um, (laughs) uh, Well, let's jump in here. Um, You know, let's 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 go back a little bit since the last time we talked uh, at Peach uh, over the summer. uh, And if people haven't heard that interview, uh, you should definitely go uh, listen to it. Um, But, you know, when we interviewed uh, or when I spoke to you last, um, you know, Chris still wasn't going to have his shoulder surgery. We were talking about Umble happening in October, and a lot has happened since then. Um, so let's start with, you know, you played with, how, how many drummers was it? Was it 10 or 12? 17. 17 different drummers. Wow. Uh, before over, Chris came back. Before Chris came back. That's, that's um, pretty crazy. I'd love to hear from both of you just what it was like uh, playing with so many different drummers and how that kind of well, worked for you playing. from a bass playing um, perspective, I think one of my, f- <clears throat> one of the, f- the most educational and favorite parts of the whole thing was what is my role of a bass player here playing with all of these different drummers that mm-hmm. have different dynamics, different pockets, uh, different scents, different, uh, just how they approach improv, um, not using a talkback mic and, and taking lead vocally during our, our original compositions, but they all put the time in and learned, um, some of our more complicated stuff too. And it was just, Every night was such a delight to go out there and be like, I'm part of a rhythm section here where it's new for us, and just really dive deep into how we were going to explore uh, improvisation. Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was a lot of work because we were basically running every song that we were going to play every single day, for obvious reasons. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't really get together with anybody before the day of show. You know, we kind of obviously talked about what we were going to do and they said okay we're going to learn these songs and then you know made notes and brought all that stuff to the table but I think it really for me you know Chris is such a a monstrous drummer and presence um and it you know to give it a fair shake is is known for playing a lot and so our music sounded different because there was more space that was happening with a lot of the guest drummers Mm -hmm. So I think that was an interesting change and challenge for us. And, uh, you know, it, every single person that came out really stepped up in, the, in their own way. And, you know, these people did their homework and were very open-minded about how we were going to do something and helped push us uh, improvisationally. Um, I, I really can't say enough about, uh, about how, you know, everybody be- going from um, Dwayne Trucks to Ben Atkin Jeremy Salkin, Mike Greenfield, Jason Bonham, we did a, you know, a Zeppelin set with. Yeah. Um, and many, then, many more. you know, New Year's, uh, Mike Portnoy and bringing out Rory from uh, Le Special and then Ben came back to, so it was, uh, it was a really, it was a really good experience, I think, for us as a band to see, you know, also how do we talk about our music? We got a lot of questions about it how do you count this? And I'm like, I don't count it. Right. <laughs> you know, just know how it goes. So, um, yeah, one of our uh, friends who shall remain nameless said to me, he's like, you uh, don't know this material very well, do you? <laughs> so, yeah. Of course. Uh, it's, not, it's not like you wrote it or anything. <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm curious, you know, you kind of touched on New Year's run, um, you know, bringing back Ben after having played with him uh, in August and September. But I'm curious, you know, obviously that initial round um, of, of drummers uh, on the, the August and September tours kind of, kind of came about very quickly. Um, you know, there wasn't a ton of time. And then for the Georgia Theater run and then the New Year's run, you had Dwayne and Ben back, who, had, who you had played with already months before. What did it feel like coming back with the two of them uh, for those separate runs? You know, I'm sure it was different because they're very different drummers, um, but was there more of a sense of familiarity? Did you try different things in jams that you couldn't do the first no, time? I, th- I thought we definitely felt more comfortable. Um, Andy and Jake had been filling in a few times for songs too, and once Dwayne came back and Ben came back, they uh, they could stick to percussion and guitar. Um, Dwayne mm-hmm. and Ben felt comfortable playing much more of the material. And you know, you, you rehearse it once backstage, you play it once live, it's great to come back and, and just become more familiar and calm and comfortable. And I think that showed, and that was pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. I think also just, you know, like off the stage, getting to hang with these guys, it was a natural, really fun experience. And so getting to have, you know, have people come back. And Ben actually came back, you know, he did that August run, and then he also did a couple of the shows in Colorado. So this was like really our third time with him. Yeah. Yeah, so I think there was there was just a lot of great natural chemistry, and I think both of those guys in particular, Dwayne and Ben, have you know having done it with us once and then coming back, really felt more comfortable themselves in uh, you know in fulfilling the, that role of being the drummer and uh, and taking over Chris's spot. So yeah, it was it was cool definitely to have them come back and be like, okay, we have this group of songs that we already know now. What else can we add that right. you know will be interesting? And you know, it was a little less pressure. Yeah, amazing. Well, I, I you know, I've I've listened to, you know, obviously here and there like some highlights uh, from some of the runs. The All in Time from New Year's Eve, I go back to all the time. I love, love that version. That uh, was I've with told ben, you about right? that. That was with Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I, I forget who it was told me on like New Year's Day, like you you have to check out this this All in Time. Like, it's do. really it's good. Really and I was like, nice. okay. <laughs> um, so now you have Chris back. Uh, you know, you guys do these kind of like weekends of touring you've done one stretch with chris back so far yeah, right two, two. Yep. okay awesome so you're just starting tonight you're kicking off the the third uh weekend back with chris how has it felt uh you know was there a bit of like reintegration uh you know bringing him back for the the last set on new year's eve uh, and then getting back into the groove with him at shows or did it just click back in immediately uh i think anything with the seven months off there's going to be some rust you know there for me seriously the hardest part was my in-ears having four different drummers in um in multiple nights or multiple even during the same show right because they all the dynamics they play so some play so much lighter um than chris and and my in ear also broke for New Year's. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know if anybody knows this. My left ear was out. The driver was gone the whole time. So not only did I have no left ear with a four-piece <laughs> horn section, four different drummers. The hardest part was trying to get my mix back to being able to hear well, just because of how hard the, the different drummers hit and their approach. To did the you camp. remember to turn yeah. the drums down before Chris came back in? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't think you can turn it down. I, 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 <laughs> Funny, uh, funny little side for that. My wife Dasha was out in the crowd, and she said, "Within the first ten seconds of Chris playing, we all looked at Bob and <laughs> going down, down." Yeah, so Chris, uh, Chris plays with some authority. Yeah, he hits and, hard, which is cool. Uh, my uh, my three year old, almost three year old son Griffin, uh, actually rode over uh, to one of the shows with him in the uh, in the van. And uh, Griffin, you know, knows what's been going on with uh, Chris. And he said, um, Chris, so your shoulder's healed? And Chris said, yeah, it's healed. And, he, and Griffin says, so you're going to play gentle now? <laughs> and, yeah. And, and Chris says to Griff, ah, Griffin, I just don't think it's possible. It's <laughs> a, a great story. I was unaware of that one. Um, I think what, what really matters now, like show nine of this year with Together, is, is not... Uh, becoming a well-oiled machine again too it's more of being in the same page with everyone Mm -hmm. when we're going to jam and really listening and and being like which direction are we going to take tonight that's more of a feel and a vibe than it is just um just reps you know what i mean yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah for me when i think about some of those improv moments i feel like it's the part c that we usually hit good things 
And I, um, so I'm issuing you the Part C challenge uh, tonight in Cleveland. Challenge. Let's uh, let's see how many times we can get there and then uh, take it out before Bayless calls for the next song. <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, we'll there it is. Joel we'll, we'll touch base. Bayless pulls the ripcord. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll touch base again after the, the show to yeah. see how the challenge went. Um, so uh, obviously, you know, one of the one of the big things that happened as a result of Chris's so- shoulder surgery was the postponement of Umbel. It's April, which I'm I'm very excited about. Uh, you know, I'm excited to be attending my first one. It's the tenth Umbel in Boston, end of April. Um, you know what? What has has have things changed? I, I'm sure things have changed. But what is what has changed in your excitement uh, for Umble since we spoke about your excitement for Umble in July? Probably the most exciting change for me is that the Cubs are now in town in Boston. So I'll just be going to those games. <laughs> Rehearsals canceled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Actually, he's just—he's not excited about Umble at all. <laughs> it's, it's really now. It's, a, it's a baseball weekend. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we'll be lucky if Joel makes it to the stage. Though. I think after ten years, what we've tried to do is really hone in on what the fans want to be a part of, what they want to vote on, what they want to control, kind of what they want to feel and see us do. But we're also excited to bring in some more production and technology to make the, you know, newer quarters uh different and exciting for the fans as well mm-hmm. so yeah. it's a little bit of new a little bit of old but hopefully the good old and the good new it'll be whelming oh good <laughs> awesome um, that, that's a good goal <laughs> yeah. uh i'm pretty sure we're bringing in a video wall for this um Ooh. and one of the quarters is going to have something related to that uh which is exciting um you know, the other thing, I think, just looking at how we've changed it over the years, it started out, Humble was really something that was for the super hardcore fans, and we were playing more obscure, old Humphrey songs. Um, you know, we were kind of finding our footing those first couple of years. And honestly, like, after a while, you just learn, you run out of decent old material to go back to. And... So we started asking ourselves, you know, what can we do to try to make Umble something that's for the the really hardcore fans, but also for somebody who maybe has only seen, like, a couple of our shows, so that it's not this daunting thing that, you know, it's like, oh, I don't don't understand what's happening. So we've broken it up now into two days, so instead of being four quarters in one night, now it's, you get a three-set show two days in a row. Right. The and we first, talked about that in July, how it's better for you now, because now you guys aren't playing for, like, five hours. Or yeah. Or that, now that, we're playing for six. That, that but, it's, but it's two nights, you know? <laughs> I, I think initially, it, it, this was before Chris had his surgery, too, but it was a lot for Chris, and it was actually a lot for just the fans' brains in general. Five yeah. and a half hours of improvisational music yeah. is, is a lot to take in. We complain about Scorsese films and Tarantino films right. going over three and a half hours. Yeah. You know, Oppenheimer, these they're too long. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, so I think that's what people were saying in our shows. They're like, they're too long. <laughs> well, people you need to break it up over two nights. <laughs> people aren't doing drugs and watching The Godfather, at least as far as I know. Yeah. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Uh, I'm, sure hey. I'm sure there are lots of people out there yeah. who, who enjoy that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think there's something to be said for us trying to like condense things a little bit. <clears throat> but the other, you know, big part is that each night we'll have one quarter where the fans vote for stuff in advance, one quarter where they're voting on things live in the moment, and then one quarter where we choose stuff. We choose. We're like, <coughs> we're like Gulf Lundgren. We do it, the third quarter is, we do it for us. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, a very, a very selfish very one. Very selfish, yeah. You like, what, won't even look at well, the, you'll put a curtain in the front of the yeah. stage. We all like, know Rocky wins, but it's still our <laughs> Dolph Lundgren moment. There you go, there you go. Um, amazing. Well, you know, anything else, uh, you know, Joel, you had said there have been some shenanigans on tour so far that... You want um, to touch on? Well, I mean, you know, we we were actually, Ryan was actually right. For Chris, he's only had one weekend out so far because he didn't make it home uh, after the first weekend. And, uh, ice. It's ice. You know, he wins for the first member of Humphreys in 2024 to have a personal shopper. Mm-hmm. Right? I, I don't know. This is new to me. I'm, oh. I'm learning as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. No, he went to Nordstrom and got, got a new wardrobe thanks to his uh, his bag not showing up oh, fantastic. <coughs> so if you think uh chris looks great in 2024 let us know <laughs> thank you thank you nordstrom sponsored is that, is that 
Is that fall under the category of shenanigans? I think so. Okay. Sounds like sounds like shenanigans. <laughs> there we go. Sure. There we go. Um, well, uh, thank you we, guys. Hold on. Oh, we, we're not. We're the, oh, okay. Well, we're just getting started. Shenanigans. All I mean, right. I was trying to buy you time here so you can think of something. I appreciate that. I know, and I know that the uh, the boundary for our shenanigans is large here, but I, just, <laughs> I, I don't think anything shenanigans. We're, we're, we're at the we're at the beginning of tour. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. It, uh, well, let's go back to a uh, New Year's Eve run shenanigan. There we go. Case. Mm. Mike Portnoy sitting in on bass. Oh, that was, that, that, that's not shenanigans. That was glorious. <laughs> Look, anytime you get to play Spinal Tap live, and anytime you catch the people's faces that don't know who it is or what you're doing, <laughs> oh, just, they're, they're so like, confused. Or like yeah. the confusion and sometimes disgust. <laughs> <laughs> It may bring so much joy to me. You know, when they're listening to the lyrics, they're like, what did they say? Yeah. And, you know, four basses. Right. It's Yeah, but for those of you who don't know, we're talking about the outstanding Spinal Tap composition, Big Bottom. Big Bottom. <laughs> yep. And uh, typically what happens in Spinal Tap is the guitar players put down their guitars, pick up their basses, and join Derek Small. So you have three basses yeah. and uh, Viv Savage on keyboards. So I um, stayed... Keyboard bass. Key- oh, keyboard. Synth bass. Okay. Lead yeah. synth bass. Yeah. Yeah, he's but we, got... But basically his point is we, we got to play, uh, not only did we get to play drums, but we also got to play bass with Mike Portnoy. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very exciting. And just jamming with Mike Portnoy alone or playing with him, I think it's like the 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 one degree of, of you know, like Kevin Bacon. It's like one degree he's of the Kevin Mike Bacon Portnoy. I feel like I'm only one degree away from... Everybody. Yeah. Uh, right. Exactly. Well, and it it was really cool seeing all his social posts. Like he just seemed so genuinely yeah, excited so cool. so nice. to be playing with yeah. you guys. Yes. Like even in advance, he was like, like I'm so excited to jam. And then you know, like it was, oh, I was I, I was like following along. You know, I, I was at Fish, but like I was following along with you know that, and you know, seeing all the different drummers. But seeing his excitement for you know somebody who doesn't know Dream Theater at all because I don't really listen to that genre of music um seeing it like in such a huge band and like so many followers whatever just being like so genuinely excited to come and play a jam band show when well, i loved was awesome. his, i loved his post with um, the wizard burial ground chart that he made yeah i thought that was pretty cool <laughs> you know there's yeah that guy's just a really he's a special human and an amazing drummer and you know that came about because chris reached out to him personally so um you know a lot of the other guys uh, a lot of the other guys, different you know people in the band here reached out to people, but uh, yeah. I know that was something that was really special for Chris, and uh, you know he got to watch the whole show from the balcony, and then there was a uh, Chris Myers chant you know at the end of the show, which was pretty sweet. Joel had called him like many many times, like from the movie Swingers, he just kept <laughs> leaving messages until Mike was like, Joel, stop <laughs> calling. Me. So we had to have we had to have Chris come in and lock him in. I think uh, I think my favorite part of the uh, night, though, after Mike played with us, so that night we had Rory Dolan play the first set, Mike Portnoy played the second set, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> I, the first person I saw when I walked downstairs after the show was over was Chris Myers, and I walked up to him and grabbed him and gave him a big hug. I'm like, a lot of people are saying, best Humphrey show ever! <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you fucking dick. <laughs> Get out of here. You just no, it was it was all part of the plan to amp him up for the New Year's Eve third set. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, get definitely, him to, well, definitely. No, we, we we had we had booked New Year's because we didn't know. We were right. you know, in August we had no idea if he would be ready, if if there would be complications, if you know, like we you had to book it, so um it was awesome. It was a great experience. We were lucky to do it and it was really cool for twenty twenty four to hit and crispy behind the kit and, and here we are uh show nine. The 2024. There we go. And many, many more to come. You know, you guys already are filling up the calendar. Spring's filling out. I did notice, yes. I did want to ask, you know, I think you, you talked about in one of our earlier interviews, you know, you guys do four nights on, and then you go home, and then you do four right. nights. You have a five night in a row on the calendar this year, and I saw we that, did. and I was like, we I did. need to ask Joel about this. Well, Joel's <sighs> not that old. <laughs> He's had, not? We had a I was led to believe that he was. No, no, his gout is gone. He still loves prunes. His bowel <laughs> movements are regular. He's like, I can do it, guys. I can last five. Fifth I'm, night. I'm, I'm yeah. skiing again. I'm getting in shape. Yeah. It's great. His knees work. <laughs> That's all good um, things. Yeah, it's going to be a uh, challenging uh, challenging five nights in a row. <laughs> Fortunately, the first two nights are two night stands. So okay. I feel like that kind of makes it slightly easier. What, 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 it's, it's not hard. 
It's, you play fucking music five nights in a row. What the fuck well, is so hard about that? He only has to play one note. Yeah. Easy for you. <laughs> yeah. so. You do play two notes. It's always, uh, it's always the penis. You've got two notes. It's not playing about the, the multiple day. <laughs> Listen, he's got a he's got a lot going on. You know, got a lot of keyboards to choose from. He's, he's show, overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's overwhelmed. You're whelmed. You're you're ready for five nights. We need to bring yeah. him down. So yeah. My my goal is to walk up to my keyboard rig and eventually just feel whelmed. Yes, that's that's yeah. that's a good goal. That's a good goal. Uh, well, I hope I feel whelmed at tonight's yeah. show. I'm I'm really really excited. Are, are whelmed. Yes, yeah. I I hope you've all been whelmed by this podcast. Uh, well, thank you. Joel and Ryan, uh, for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Uh, look forward to doing this again soon, you know, as we tend to do. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited, for, I'm excited for tonight, excited to hear the rest of the tour, and uh, excited for Humble. Yeah, if you're out there listening, we're touring the whole country, so come out yeah. and see us. Yeah. And thank you guys for getting some uh, Doom Flamingo shows up on Nugs. It's nice. I like listening to myself. I don't have any involvement in that, but you're welcome. <laughs> Shout out to Nugs. Shout out to Nugs. Yeah, Shout out to Nugs. Well, by the way, they're streaming tonight. No, Tomorrow? not tonight. Oh. The other three nights this yeah. week. They're streaming the other three nights of this week. You can wear your uh, and your by own. the time this is out, all th- the shows will have happened already. Yeah. So I can wear my sweatsuit. Is that what you're going to say? say? You can wear your underwhelming clothes tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Very expensive ones with lots of patterns you should save for tomorrow. There we we'll, go. We'll let Chris know, too. There we go. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you guys so much, and thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of We Move Through Stormy Weather. Have a fantastic day, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.